So, uh, the, tonight we'll talk about the second of the 12 steps of ecological recovery. Now, the 12 steps of ecological recovery are exactly the same as the 12 steps of recovery from alcoholism, narcotics addiction, deading, sexual addiction, overeating, and the list goes on and on and on. Modern people living in developed nations are mostly addicted to something or another. In the absence of any specific addiction, what we are addicted to is our cultures, our unsustainable, uncontrollable cultures that are founded on consumption, founded on overproduction, founded on the idea that we are the center of the universe and the world revolves around us. This is a fallacy, an unsustainable fallacy. Uh, it tells us our addiction to uh, our culture tells us that we exist for ourselves alone, either individually or as a species, rather than that we exist for one another. And we only exist for one another. That there is no separate existence, there is no separate destiny, there is no place other than the earth in which we are nested and stand in intimate interconnection with all other things on which we are dependent for our lives. So the second step says, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Now the first step, which we talked about last week, was we admitted that we were powerless over, here it says alcohol, we said our culture of addiction, that our lives had become not unmanageable, which is the AA language, but had become unsustainable. Actually, some of us feel that our lives are quite manageable. That is the nature of our insanity, is that we can feel that our lives are very, very manageable, even though they're completely out of control. And I'll give you an example. Uh, Obama's science czar, a man named John Holdren, at a press conference uh, last year in April 2009, he gave a press conference where he used an ominous metaphor to describe what is happening to human beings right now. Now, John Holdren is a population uh, scientist, uh, among other things, person who studies climate change, climate control, and population uh, densities and population growth. He said, we are driving in a car with bad brakes through the fog and headed for a cliff. We know for sure the cliff is out there, we just don't know exactly where it is. This was his metaphor. So in this scenario, which he explained for reporters, the car is us about to go over the edge, us Americans specifically, but really human beings in general, especially those living in <laughs> nations around the world, consuming far, far more than, than, than uh, uh, as a species than, than human beings can or could or should. Okay. The bad breaks are our faulty regulations on uh, greenhouse gas emissions. The fog is our uncertainty about where we stand in relationship to global climate change. Is it here already? Is it too late to do anything about it? We don't know. We're not quite certain yet. There's a certain degree of uncertainty about a system that vast and that wide and that inclusive and how it behaves or how fast it moves and changes what its elasticity is. So, in a car with bad brakes headed to a cliff, the cliff is the tipping point, the point beyond which it really is no longer possible to reverse uh, the effects of global climate change. So here's John Holdren, a very, very accomplished person, Obama's, quote, science advisor, science czar, and he's spinning out this metaphor for these reporters who are dutifully taking notes and reporting it to us, and to me, and I'm reporting it to you. But nowhere does he mention the road. The road is the one thing he doesn't explain because he does not see it. He cannot see it. It's invisible to him. He doesn't even know that there's anything but the road. The road is all he knows. So it never occurs to him to ask a very simple but very urgent question is, what are we doing on a road leading to a cliff. How did we get on a road leading to a cliff? Did nature put us on that road? The answer is no. Nature would never 
put us on a road leading to a cliff. If we look at the road we came on, it's millions of years long. And if we look at where that road leads, then if we take a straight bearing off of it, it leads possibly, potentially at least, millions of years into the future. But long about the Industrial Revolution, what happened was we began to veer precipitously off of that path through deep time on a path of our own creation, a path of overconsumption, a path of cultural addiction, <coughs> which leads us to persist in doing things which are damaging to the earth and therefore damaging to other species and to ourselves and which we cannot stop ourselves from doing no matter how hard we try no matter how much we seek to educate one another about it we just can't seem to stop that's why it's called an addiction and it's unsustainable and clearly it's unmanageable so the second step was came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. So we know what the insanity is. The insanity is a culture that tells us that what we need to worry about are our brakes, or the fog, or how fast we're going, or the car, but doesn't want us for one moment to consider the road we're on and whether it might not be the wrong road whether the whole system might not be so profoundly and deeply flawed that without changing it in very, very dramatic ways, there really is very little hope. And so in order to find this other path or to find this, this uh, sane existence, we have to uh, believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to it because the clear message is that we can't restore ourselves to it. There's no uh, science advisor, there's no president, there's no international uh, commission, there's no Kyoto Protocol, there's no Stockholm Convention, there is no organization and no leadership that will get humanity back on track. We get ourselves back on track through an interchange which then spreads from person to person. That is the only way that we can possibly do this. It has to come from the ground up, it has to be grassroots, it has to spread laterally rather than from the top down. Aww.